Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Last episode, we made a start on our blood magic setups. We got the tier 3 blood altar, and we started automating some of the tier 1 essences, along with the simple catalysts here. We're going to continue with blood magic today, but between episodes, I've been uh, just tweaking some things, making some optimizations. So first, I noticed here that we weren't getting any nether quartz dust for uh, these attuned dyes. We get a tiny amount of this from the sagmill and, and ore processing. Just set up a dedicated crusher here to crush down nether quartz, which should always keep this crafter full. I also fixed the issue of us running out of GP powder by adding a separate recipe set to uh, keep in the internal buffer. So we should never run out of GP powder again. And I also cleared some of the backlog on these drawers, as I noticed some of them had filled up. And just refined the filtering on this ender chest here. So yeah, the goal for this episode is to continue our automations in blood magic. All of the inputs for these tier 1 essences are completely automated, besides the aerogel. So we left off last episode by trying to automate this in the aether. But I didn't end up finishing this setup, as I'm told that this can be very unstable for, for the game. Basically, if you try to set this up and have the mechanical user place the lava, well, there's still lava there, then it can do very bad things to your game. So <laughs> I think we're just going to batchcraft a bunch of this to begin with. And later on, we can fix this problem with the use of uh, mystical agriculture. I think all of these are quite low tier crops. Yeah, this is tier 2, tier 2, and tier 1 seeds. So we can have access to this relatively quickly. Yeah, so it only took a couple of minutes, but we have just over two stacks of aerogel. I think it's also about time we're due another applied energistics upgrade, as we have, what, 36 lines of, a, of molecular assembler slots, all completely full here. Alright, so I think the first thing we're going to do today is have a look at the other side of chapter 15. And this side is Evil Craft, which I have no clue about, but <laughs> I guess we're going to figure this out together. The reason I'd like to get into Evil Craft though, is it's going to allow us to get the Apprentice Blood Orb, which lets us get the Tier 2 Essences. And ultimately, we can get down to the Incense Ulr, which is going to make generating LP a lot easier. Especially since we only have access to the Sacrificial Dagger at the moment. So to get started, we're going to need a Blood Extractor. I have no clue what this is going to be used for, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah, there's our first quest. The next quest is for a darkened apple, which is uh, some dark blocks. This uses the dark gems that we've been farming, or mining for a long time now, but <laughs> yeah, this is I guess the first time we're going to be using these things. Alright, so to get the documentation for this mod, which we're definitely going to want, uh, we apparently need to feed a mob this apple. And then throw a book. Oh, <laughs> that was pretty cool. And we have the Origins of Darkness. Okay, I guess I've got some reading to do here. <laughs> okay, so first it seems we need to kill some mobs with this blood extractor in our inventory to, uh, yeah, collect their blood, basically. Oh, it's already full. All right, that was quick. Then we can place down five buckets of this blood and toss in a dark gem. Yeah. All right, so we next have to fill our blood extractor again, which we can then insert into our Tinker Smelter here. And then cast this as blocks. I think this counts as different, a different version of blood to this blood, which is the Tinker's Construct blood. But this version solidifies into the Evil Craft Hardened blood, which we can smelt down into shards. And then we can craft those with the Power Gem and some of these hardened blood droplets, which we make in the Blood Allure, to get our Infusion Core. Alright, so that lets us craft the Blood Star, which is how we create our Apprentice Blood Orb, which I think we actually will do just so that we can get our quest reward here. This gives us another four of these dark power gems. But instead of getting the Apprentice Blood Orb at the moment, I think we'll continue down this evil craft route and try to get the Incense Allure. So for that, we need a Blood Infuser. Oh, this looks like a <laughs> craft and a half. So apart from the fact that it takes up some more recipe slots, it's, <laughs> it's actually not too bad to craft this thing. We should maybe consider putting Steam and Restoring it on passive though, as we seem to be using quite a lot of this stuff. But now we have our Blood Infuser. So this block, it looks like, takes the blood from Evilcraft as a fuel, and is used to make various different recipes here. I think we will have to automate this though. It looks like we need this for the next tier of leather. But first we need to make this Promise Acceptor, which takes a full tank of blood. The quest did give us this dark tank, which I think will also fill alongside the blood extractor. Oh, okay, we have to craft this together with, with the blood extractor, and that increases the blood to 2100. And now we have to use an empowered Inori block, which, by the way, I noticed in the last episode that I forgot to uh, filter the drawers on these things. So we have 64 blocks of each empowered crystal. <laughs> um, that definitely wasn't intended. I think during the live stream I swapped these out with compacting drawers, and I didn't put the drawer downgrades in there. 
So yeah, now we need to craft this with 10,000 blood. Four free in power denori. That's not bad. So now I was expecting to be able to get the next quest here, but it looks like it's locked behind absent assurances. Oh, it's this one. Okay, so yeah, so to progress we need the apprentice blood orb. And this we have to use to create one of our tier 2 essences, which we can then fill a bowl of empty promises. And then that we can use for the promise of tenacity. Then I think this is what unlocks the incense altar for us. Yeah, that must be what this quest is here, and then that leads into the tier 3 essences, and then the incense altar. So I guess we've got the tier 2 essences to do first. So this blood orb takes 12,000 LP, but our altar right now only holds 10,000. So I'm hoping that actually we can just fill this to capacity, and then sacrifice while it's crafting. Nice. So the tier 2 are actually quite a bit more complicated here and are obviously a lot more expensive. So I think at, at this stage we're just going to do this uh, on demand. But doing these alchemy tables on demand isn't going to be quite as simple as just using the impulse hopper here. Instead I think we'll have to use integrated dynamics for all of the item handling. So I think something like this should work. I haven't actually had a chance to test it yet as we don't have the input items for the tier 2 essences. It does look a little bit strange but uh, <laughs> I think this is probably one of the easier ways to do this. But before we get a chance to test this and I explain how all of this works, let's set up the input items for the tier 2 essences we want to create with this thing. So by the looks of things, all of the tier 2 essences require this strengthened catalyst, which is like the next tier of the simple catalyst. However, as you can see, this takes mechanism ore clumps, and these clumps we produce with various types of ores which we have to purify in oxygen. And I believe pretty soon we're also going to need the shards as well, which is a different type of purification. Yeah, the shards are instead created in hydrogen chloride in the chemical injection chamber. So we need both the shards and the clumps. So I know it is a lot of back and forth between blood magic and some other setups, but I think it's worth um, automating this stuff at the moment. Alright, so a couple of episodes ago we already set up the first few machines for this process. We are taking our brine and electrolytic separating this into sodium and also chlorine. The sodium we're using in this injection chamber and this is going to be used for industrial leather automation. But what we're after today is the chlorine. So I've set up a chemical infuser here which inputs the chlorine to give us hydrogen chloride. So obviously we also need hydrogen which we're getting from this electrolytic separator from water. So I've placed an unending bowl to supply the water in the front of this electrolytic separator. That is then buffered in this gas tank and then into the chemical infuser to give us the hydrogen chloride here. So now that we have our hydrogen chloride, we need to send, I think it's iron and tin ore, through chemical injection chambers. So I've crafted up two of these, which I think we'll place on top here. And I believe the output of this has to come out of the front here. So we have to move the energy somewhere else. And again, unfortunately, no gas conduits in this pack, so we have to use this pressurized tube. So something like that should work, right? Yeah, we have hydrogen chloride. Cool. And I guess we'll just reroute the power underneath. So now we have to input uh, both of the ores. And this setup isn't going to work out perfectly as um, we're not going to end up with iron ingots when we process it like this. As they will be consumed in the process of making these strengthened catalysts. So I don't think it's a possibility for us to send all of our iron or all of our tin through this process. We're still going to want it to process through ore processing over here. But since our ore processing is slower than the rate that we're getting ores, we are still backlogging on iron ore. And I assume the same for tin ore as well. Uh, tin maybe not so much, that may end up an issue. We may have to sub some level emitters on the processing for those ores. But since our LP generation isn't automated, we don't need a ton of this stuff um, at the moment. So I think for the time being we'll just place an interface and request as much ore as the system will give it. This is a problem we can solve later on once we get access to mystical agriculture, as then we can just route all the ores that we're getting from our uh, quantum quarry into this setup for the catalysts, and we'll use mystical agriculture to produce all of our ingots. But we just somehow have to get the <laughs> items from this interface into these injection chambers. Yeah, I think something like this can work. Yeah, we're giving these some power, and we have filters for both the iron ore and the tin ore. So now we're producing our tin shards, which are used for, I think this is for tier 3 stuff. And these, similar to all of the other passive processes, we're going to output to drawers above. And we will use storage downgrades for these things. So we can use the auto output feature on the machine for this, I think. Alright, so that is the shards. Next we need the clumps. And this process, I think, is a bit easier, since we already have the oxygen as the other byproduct of creating hydrogen for our hydrogen chloride. So we just have that outputting from the left side of this electrolytic separator, buffered into an ultimate gas tank. We really need some peace candles here. <laughs> And then the oxygen gets passed between these two purification chambers where we have the tin and iron ore. And those are once again output to the drawer above. 
And as for the inputs, we're just inputting in the back from the same interface that we're requesting our iron and tin ore. We can lock our drawers. So actually, I think that's us finished with this setup. Apart from the fact that it looks garbage. <laughs> so maybe, yeah, let's actually just fix that right now. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> this kind of brings me back to doing Greg Tech chemistry, but um, this is a, a little bit easier than Greg Tech, I would say. So yeah, I tried to hide as much of the pipes as I could. Unfortunately, I don't think we can facade these mechanism cables. So you can still see some at the back, but I did try and make sure there was uh, bricks all around so that it kind of ties it in nicely. But yeah, hopefully this system is robust enough to handle the clump and shard requirements. There is of course room for upgrades in these machines, we don't have any upgrades other than the muffling ones. And I think we can even increase these to factory variants, which can handle more ore at once. But yeah, let's go now have a bit of fun with integrated dynamics. So while I was setting up this system here, I was actually also changing the way we done our alchemy tables last episode. And I changed the inputs all to integrated dynamics instead of just outputting from this impulse hopper. But I uh, realized this morning that I don't actually think this step is necessary, so I'll probably switch it back. But the reason I changed it, it was, is because of this incendium recipe. So the recipe for incendium requires two different inputs of pyrothium dust. And there is another recipe here with the aquasalus, which also takes two inputs of the same type. But since the water buckets don't stack, it doesn't really apply in this recipe. But basically what happened with the incendium was when the impulse hopper sent all of its items, the two pyrothium dust required for the craft would stack in this slot, and then you would end up with an empty slot and that would fill with the wrong item, and you wouldn't be able to complete the craft. So I tried to do a bunch of limiting with integrated dynamics, and then I wanted to make it all consistent, so I swapped them all. I found out that you could actually just keep the buffer full of 63 pyrothium, since we're only doing one recipe in this anyway. So by keeping the 63 dust in here, it should stop it getting stuck. Yeah, this setup is unnecessary. <laughs> there was also one more thing I missed last episode, and that is empty buckets. So in Aquasalus and also Incendium, we need lava buckets and water buckets. When these complete the craft, it does not consume the buckets. So you're left with an empty bucket in here. So to extract that, the only way to do that is from the side of the machine. However, Integrated Dynamics being the amazing mod that it is, <laughs> can let you actually do it from the bottom. And a big shout out to Taz on our Discord server for pointing this out for me. So on both the Incendium and Aquasalus recipes, I've put a item importer on the bottom of the alchemy table. And this is connected back to an interface for the bucket inserts. And on these importers, we have import items fillered for a bucket. And up here in the top, we have um, the target side is east. So this basically acts as if you're plugging it into the side of the machine, except it's in the bottom, which does allow you to pull the bucket out and clear the space for the next recipe. And that way we don't have to run cables on the side, at least for these machines. But this on-demand setup is slightly different as we're gonna be handling uh, more than one recipe in this alchemy table. And there is instances here where items will stack here. So first of all, let's try to make sure this actually works. So I've put in the recipe for the strength and catalyst which incidentally does take two items which will stack. It takes two basalts powder, the new iron clump and tin clumps that we created, and some simple catalysts. So we want the interface on blocking mode for this. We'll uh, put in our pattern here, and then try to request the strength and catalyst. And we're missing simple catalysts. Oh, they must all be trying to be placed in these alchemy tables. Uh, let's just for the time being just disconnect these ones, just so that we can test this system out. Okay, hopefully this is going to work here. We should see that each item has filled its slots, it does awesome. <laughs> All right, okay, so the way this is set up is we have item exporters on each side of the alchemy table, which acts as a different slot for the machine. We have just a regular interface on the chest with obviously the interface on blocking mode, so there's only gonna be one recipe in here at once. And then starting from the front here, the first exporter is set to export all items, but we're using um, item transfer rate of one, exact amount true, and item slot zero. So all of these are the same except this item slot is set for 1, this one's 2, 3, 4 and 5, which corresponds I believe to the chest's item slots. So the first slot is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that way it will cycle through the items in the chest and then only put one of the correct items in the alchemy table. So now we're just missing our blood orb and we can make our strength in catalyst, which gets taken by the importer and put back in the ME interface. And that should have completed the craft on our applied energistic system. Nice. So eventually we will want to passive this one. In fact, you know what, it's probably worth just passive in this one anyway. 
since this is used for all the tier 2 essences and then we'll just do all of these ones on demand. Alright so I added the extra alchemy table to passive the strength in catalysts and I also removed the integrated dynamics um, item handling for these passive machines and stuck some facades on the bottom just to tidy things up a bit. I've also decided we're going to move this drawer network somewhere else. I'm not sure yet where it's going to live but um, we'll do that once we add the rest of the alchemy tables here. So for the strength in catalyst, we need to buffer both the basals and the simple catalysts as 63 in the alchemy table. But at this point, let's look at automating the inputs for the tier 2 essences, of which I believe there's only four. So we can put in recipes for these ones. What is this? Arboreal essence. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Um, it looks like we have to automate roots then. And there is two of these, which I believe... For the case, since we're doing blocking mode, we need to have two separate input items like this. Alright, so that is the first recipe. Second one is Crystallos, which takes the Aquasalus, some packed ice and snow. Okay, this one should be a bit easier. Make sure to remove the blood orb from the recipe. Next up is the one we need for the incense altar, which is this Magicalus or Magicalus. And the last one is Sanctus. Alright, so all of these recipes I think we can just put in this interface here. And let's just see if we can request one of each for this quest so that we can unlock the, the next part of evil craft. So can we craft Sanctus? We're missing Electrum Glass. Easy recipe to add, but we will have to do this on passive at some point. I noticed that this Sanctus also takes Holy Stone. How are we going to automate that thing? I think our only option is actually just to do a builder in the Aether dimension. It doesn't look like there's any other crafting recipe for this thing. Another thing we have to look at doing is getting enough blood orbs for each of these alchemy tables. As right now we only have two, <laughs> we only have one on the on the blood altar, and then one I'm just using for this alchemy table at the moment, but I've been swapping them between each one, which obviously is not ideal. Alright, but there is Sanctus for the quest. The magic one looks like we have all the materials for it. I think everything from here is automated besides the Cyclops eye, and I think for this we have to have another powered spawner for these guys. Yeah, it looks like that is our only option for this, but we should have a decent amount of these backlogged. Only 31, hmm, that's not as many as I would have thought, okay. But there is the magic tier 2 essence. Crystallos, can we get this? We need a recipe for packed ice. Okay. We really should just passive this stuff. So <laughs> I've just added an extra... It's just one machine. It's just the Glacial Precipitator. And then this just connects to the same drawer network. And we already have... Yeah, we already have snow and regular ice being created here as well. So that should allow us to request Crystallos. Yeah, and the last one is Orbis Terra. Which is the thing that takes this arboreal essence. Oh, actually, after looking at this some more... It looks like these are specific saplings. This can't be any type of sapling. It has to specifically be willow, silver bell, hop seed, and tiger wood. And the only one we currently have in our system is the willow sapling. I have no idea where this came from, but um, yeah, we need to create the other three. So apparently some of these trees can be found in the twilight forest. If we can't find them here, we're going to have to do some sort of abyssal craft ritual for these things. Wait, is this one? Yeah, this is the silver bell we're after. Alright, so we just need hop seed and tiger wood. And the hop seed looks like it's only an overworld, but the tiger wood we should be able to find here somewhere. Oh, found one. <laughs> it looks very similar to these maple ones. I almost passed this thing, but we have our tiger. Alright, I've been out here searching for this thing for, well, too long. <laughs> so I think we're just going to do the abyssal craft ritual for this. The ritual for this hop seed sapling though requires wildwood saplings. And wildwood is only craftable. To be able to create the sapling though, we need the wood, and we've done this in, uh, I don't know, it was a very early episode for this wildwood stuff. This is the material we made our first armor set from. So to be able to get the first wild root for the sapling that we need, we have to once again do the ritual of wild root growth, which can grow a wild root crop into a tree. There we go. And I believe these don't drop saplings though, so I think we can only get the wood from this thing. But once we have the wood, we can combine with antlers, which luckily we do actually have spares of. I was hunting for these things for hours the first time we needed these for the armor. But we need antlers, some red cedar, which is a totemic sapling, and some wild root. And like this, we can create the wildwood saplings. And we're going to want two of these things. And those were just two of the components we need for this abyssal craft ritual. We also need two dugonia, two HOP graphite, and two empowered emeraldic crystals. 1000 PE. And we have the last sapling we need. <laughs> so now that we have all four saplings, we are definitely going to want to farm these, as we need one of each for every five arboreal essence. The question is though, where do we put this farm for these trees? Hmm. Yeah, so I think this will be a decent spot for another tree farm. I decided to go with the farming station from it from Ender.io since there's only four saplings we need. 
So we can put in our hop seed, the willow, tigerwood, and silver bell. For power, we just have a power cell under here. And for the outputs, we have an ender chest, which I'll connect up to the drawer network over there. Oh, and I also crafted the wrong tool here. <laughs> I made the matic. We need a unbreakable axe for the trees. All right, now we should be chopping trees down. So we just have to set the drawer for each of these woods. And we'll probably just void this wood. We're primarily interested in the saplings from that thing. All right, so with the saplings, we can create the arboreal essence. But since this takes hardened blood droplets, which are made in the blood allure, I think we're going to just stick to batch crafting this stuff. We will make a dedicated pyre just for this craft though, so that later on it's all going to be set up for us. So to get all of this root stuff to work though, we need to do the growth supplication again. And to get another growth stone, we need an eagle bone, which we don't have. So um, I think this eagle who's been here since like, I don't know, episode 4 or 5 maybe? He's the only survivor, but um, I think his time has come. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but there is our eagle bone. We can make our growth stone. And I was trying to think of a space to put this thing, and uh, we had this kind of dead space in between this these two entrances. This is our immersive engineering room back here, so why don't we just stick it in this little little spot here? We'll have to find a way to tidy this up though. But now we have to perform grove supplication. We should activate this for crafting. So I batch crafted up a bunch of these hardened blood droplets, and we're just going to batch craft this stuff. So it's also been enough time, I took a little break after setting up that farm. We have a bit of a buffer on these saplings by now, so we just need one of each and a blood droplet. But having the chest underneath will continually pull the items from here and keep crafting this until there's no more input items left. So this will give us a decent chunk of arboreal essence that we can use, especially since we get five at a time. But this now means that we can request Orbis Terra and complete the tier 2 essences. So this brings us back to Evilcraft where we have to make our bowl of promises. We need some crushed dark gems and some of this magic dust that we just created. Oh and this is not a regular bowl either, we need more dark power gems. Mm, we should also look at a better way of getting blood but I think that is opened up to us next. I think there's something to do with a sapling that we can automate blood with. But for the time being I think we're just stuck farming mobs. <laughs> So we got our empty promises, and then we have to fill the bowl, <laughs> and then infuse it with some blood. So we need two of these things to create our promise of tenacity. So this now unlocks Glod's Guarantee, <laughs> which is um, the gold version of the promise acceptor, which does take a promise of, of tenacity and 40,000 blood. Well, I was going to skip the blood automation for this episode, but if it takes that much to get our tier 3 essences, then maybe it's worth looking into that sapling. The only thing is that sapling does take another promise of tenacity and 25,000 blood along with a dead bush to make the undead sapling. But with the undead leaves and also wood, we can squeeze those down into 100 millibuckets of blood. Oh, that's also going to mean another tree farm though. Uh, but yeah, once we're farming this stuff, um, it's going to add up to being quite a lot, especially if we do it passively. Oh, okay, so the promise of tenacity turns out it goes in the, the left slot, which does increase the capacity on this thing, which can let us craft the sapling that we need. It also doesn't consume the promise of tenacity, which is excellent. But after farming more mobs in the Dreadlands, we can create our gold promise acceptor. And it turns out we've completely missed a step here. <laughs> uh, so I didn't expect to have to run into this thing, but we have to get into the Hellfire Forge. And the reason for that is to create the tier 3 essences, we need a tier 3 blood orb. And to create our tier 3 blood orb, we need the blood core, which takes icy cores, and these take these blood magic reagents. So obviously the Hellfire Forge is something we are going to want to automate, similar to the alchemy tables. But for now, we'll just create one of them. So to power the Hellfire Forge, we need Demonic Will. And to get this, we need Tartaric Gems. And to start off with, I guess we need the Rudimentary Snares. So I made up a decent amount of these things. We have to throw them at mobs until we can see some particles. And I remember doing this in interactions. I think a creeper actually got me when I was doing this at him. So with our Demonic Will, we're going to first want to create some Tartaric Gems. Oh nice, it gives us one for free. So to be able to upgrade our Tartaric Gems, we're going to want the Sentient Sword. But to craft this thing, we need a minimum of 32 will. And that's going to be a lot of rudimentary snares we have to make, which is a lot of coagulated blood. And we still don't have a way to automate this yet, so oh yeah. Oops. <laughs> oh, that's like the fifth time that's happened. So in that case, I think we're going to wrap up things here for today. Unfortunately, we didn't get our incense all or today. This is going to require us to get, I think, the tier 2 reagents, which requires all of the tier 1s, and this is uh, <laughs> quite the rabbit hole to jump down here. 
uh, salt, sugar, windmills, <laughs> pressurized air tanks. Look at all this stuff. But um, yeah, we've got all that to look forward to to automate soon. We did technically manage to get all of the tier 2 essences stuff, besides a couple of things like the holy stone and the cyclops eyes. But I think maybe between episodes I'll add a powered spawner for those guys. Also, after I died here to the blood altar, I actually lost the dank null, and I have no idea where that thing is. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think we're gonna have to craft another one. Luckily, it didn't have anything important in it, it was just building blocks, so I'll have to replace that. But yeah, next episode, I think we will still continue with blood magic. I'm really enjoying doing this blood magic stuff. We're not too far away from the end of the chapter, though. And uh, of course, we'll also look into the automated blood generation from Evilcraft. That could be pretty fun to automate. But yeah, we're going to wrap things up here for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.